Hi, my name is Tom Hunter, MSC from Clearwater Canvas in uh, Bel Air, Florida. Um, I'm the designer and creator of Easy Frame Program, and I'm going to talk to you today about how you go ahead and find out what your actual radius is that your bender creates. In order to use Easy Frame, you have to have the actual radius being created by your individual bender. There's two things that go into that, the bender radius and the type of bender you have and the type of material and diameter of your tubing. For each diameter and for each material type, you have to do all of these calculations um, to get your actual radius. Okay, The bender radius and the, and the um, actual radius, the actual radius is always going to be larger than what the bender radius because of spring back. When you bring it back, it always bends back a little bit and so your actual radius will be somewhat larger than that and that depends on each material and diameter also. Um, the first thing we want to do is I'm going to grab a pen here and after you have your piece of, t of material and you need something that's in the three to four foot range, it could be a scrap piece, it doesn't make it if it's scratched or whatever, or it got a kink in it, doesn't make any difference as long as it's, it's uniform through here. And the first thing you want to do, and I like to do is on this bender, it's a bend arc bender, I would like to do is, is I like to position by marking the top right along the front edge of this. Uh, then I actually um, mark the beginning and ending of my bend. In this case, I know the begin angle, the bend begins right here from previous things. It's an eye thing, but there's another way of doing that, and I'll show you how to do that later on if we get it all bent. Um, the other thing we're going to do is bend the, the end of the bend, which is going to be down in this location here. After we've made our bend, where it trans transitions between the, the radius curve and back to straight again, we need to mark that so that we're actually taking measurements inside the radius. After we've gone ahead and made our 90 degree bend and make that as close as you can to 90 degrees, it's just an eyeball thing, so it's basically down here straight. Um, you're going to have to go ahead and mark the end of your bend or where it changes over. In this case, we're going to make a we're going to make a bend mark right here on this on the tube. Now we have a a starting bend which is up here and a ending bend here. We want to make sure all of our measurements are inside of these two marks in order to get in, make sure we're inside the curved area to take a radius calculation. But one other information I want to give you is how do you determine the uh, beginning of the bend. This is our bent piece of tubing. Um, and we can, you can eyeball it. In my case, I already know. I already marked where that beginning of that bend is on for my bender. But for your bender, you won't have that. You can eyeball it to see where it's starting to make its change. Or if you look at the inside radius, let's see in the inside radius of your tubing. Here's the start, here's the end. At the inside of your radius, when you look at that, if you bring your finger across it or something like that, you can actually feel where it starts to, to change. Because when, you, when you're bending tubing, you're actually going to be starting to stretch it and, and, and deform it slightly. So there'll be a little bit of a bump. And just prior to the bump is where you're beginning. So if you look in here, you'll feel the bump is like right in here is where the bump is. And just in front of that is where your bend actually starts. And then it narrows down as it compresses this side and it stretches this side. After we've gone ahead and made our bend at the, at the bender, we brought the, the actual piece of tubing over to our workbench. We're going to make a couple of, of marks on this. We want to take all of our measurements to the center line of the tubing. The actual center line of the tubing is, is the very highest point when it's laying on the thing. You can either eyeball that or you can even mark it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and do a marking right along the top center of that, of that tubing. That's the center line that we're going to take all of our measurements to. The next thing we want to do is to make sure that we're well inside of the, the beginning of the bend and the end of the bend. So roughly I'm going to make another mark about an inch inside right here and right here. It's not has, doesn't have to be exact, we just make sure we're getting inside of that. Then we're going to put another piece of tubing over here to make sure that my ruler lays nice and flat and inside of, inside of that I'm going to take four different me readings, center line to center line. So I'm going to line up the beginning of my ruler and the 12 inch on, um, on the center lines, which I have right there. So the first reading is our cord length, which is the length across here, and it, and it reads at 12 inches. You go ahead and set it so it does read that. At half of that, or six inches, we're going to measure straight up from this point 
at six inches and I'm gonna read that mark so we got 12 inches and I'm gonna say it's it's um, 1 and 15 sixteenths so we want to go ahead and read write down those two measurements for location one it's it's a cord length of 12 inches and 1 and 15 sixteenths of an inch okay <clears throat> for the second reading we're going to do, um, let's say, 11. So we want the it on the center line for, for 0 and at 11 for the other one. And again, now at half of 11, which is 5 and a half, we're going to go. It's better if you don't touch that, so don't move. But go from 5 and a half, we want to go up. And we're going to get a reading of... 1 and 9 sixteenths. Okay, so write down for set location 2, cord length of 11 inches and 1 and 9 sixteenths for the cord height. Now again, your cord, your cord height, just to make sure we know what we're talking about, is at the line created by your ruler going across, which would be the top half of the ruler, and at half of that distance, whatever it is, 11 inches across here in this case, at five and a half, halfway up, you want to go from that point up to the center line of the tubing again and take a reading. So that's the cord height. This is the cord length. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop it down to 10 inches. The reason we take me four measurements or more, you can do more if you want, is that we are trying to read, even though the 10 inches is probably a pretty good measurement, this reading being a small number is is inaccurate so we're going to the four of these and we'll average them together later after we get the actual calculations so now we have a reading at 10 inches zero is at one center line and 10 is at the other center line like that and then at five inches which is a half of, of 10 we're going to go up and measure this and we're going to get um, Let's call it one and a quarter inches. So the cord height is one and a quarter, and the and the uh, the cord length is ten inches. All right, we're going to go ahead and do this one more time. Now you can do it five or six times if you want. The more you got, the more accurate you're going to be. So let's go ahead and set it at nine inches now. So we got zero at one center line, and nine at the other, and at four and a half. We're going to come straight up, and we're going to read, in this case, one inch. So the cord height for location four, the cord length of four is nine inches, and the cord height is one inch. Now we've gone ahead and done ours that, and the next thing is to go back to your, your uh, computer and easy frame, and we'll show you how it actually calculates that out. After we've gone ahead and, and taken our measurements across our piece of tubing uh, off our bench and for the four different locations, we're now going to go into Easy Frame, which we have open here, and we're going to go ahead and calculate the actual radiuses. There's a section in Easy Frame, which is right here, which actually calculates the, the radius for you by putting in your cord length and your cord height. Go ahead and click it on here and this opens up the calculation, calcula, calculation radius. Um, so you're basically just going to add these numbers that we've gone ahead and take. For the first one, we have uh, a cord length of 12 inches. So we'll put in 12 inches here, tab down to the next one, and we have a cord height of 1 and 15 sixteenths. That 15 sixteenths is basically 15 divided by 16 added to, to 1. So we get one point nine three seven five and then you hit calculate and it'll give you your radius in this case it reading ten point two five nine so we're going to go ahead and 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 write down the first result and that's ten point two five nine inches now we'll go ahead and do so we'll, we'll go ahead and go back to these two numbers here and we'll 
we'll change it. For the second position, we had 11 inches. So we'll type in 11 here. Tab down, and our second number is 1 and 9 sixteenths, which is actually 1.5625 inches. And again, we'll hit calculator, and we got a, a radius, a calculated radius of 10.461. 10.461. Now we'll do the third one. So go back here, click on this. We're going to type in 10 inches here for the cord length, tab down, and we're going to have uh, one and a quarter inches, which is 1.25 inches. Hit the calculator again, and we got 10.625, 10.625 inches. And you can see these are varying quite a bit, and that's because that this, this number right here is a small number. The smaller any number or measurement you take, the more inaccurate your reading is always going to be. The longer it is, the more accurate it will be. So we're going to average these out. So let's go back and do the fourth one, one more. So we're going to write in 9 inches for the fourth location. Cord height is 1 inch. And we'll go ahead and hit the calculator again. And we got the same 9.625. Ten point uh, ten point six two five. I'm sorry, is what the actual radius was. Now we're going to go ahead and just add these numbers up and divide by four. So we'll take the ten point six two five times two because we got two of those plus ten point four six one four six one plus ten point two five nine, and we're going to get that. Divide by 4, and we get 10.4925, or 10 and a half inches. And that's your actual radius that you would use for that piece of steel, which is 10 and a half inches. So every time it asks you for your bender radius, you're going to put that number in. This only has to be done once for each type of tubing and diameter. Uh, if you only use one inch stainless steel, you'd be doing this one time. And then you would go ahead and record that 10.5, stick it near your thing, and every time it asks you, you're going to put in 10.5 inches. Okay, thank you.